So hello and welcome to the computer lab. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a time lapse like you can see on the screen now using a set of static images in Final Cut Pro. So if that is something you are interested in, then please do carry on watching this video. Okay, so the first thing is obviously we need to open up Final Cut Pro. So let's get Final Cut Pro open. And once we get into Final Cut Pro, you will see that the project that I have open already is the one that you've just been watching on the screen. So I'm going to close this library down. And I'm going to create a new library because that's how I like to work in Final Cut Pro. I create a new library for each different uh, project that I'm working on. So I've closed my library. I've got nothing open at the moment. I'm going to file new library. And I'm going to give this a name and I'm also going to pick where I'm going to save it to. So I'm just going to save it onto this USB I've got plugged in there. And I'm going to call it um, Time Lapse Tutorial uh, Final Cut Pro. And just for good measure, YouTube. Okay, so I'm going to save it onto my, um, like I said, my USB that I've got plugged in here. And again, if you are saving it onto USBs or hard drives, make sure you've got enough room because when you start working in Final Cut Pro, the libraries are usually end up quite huge. Not too bad with time lapses because of their images, but when you start working in the video, they do end up big. So now that the library is created, we just need to import the media. So I'm going to click on the import media button and I have taken, I think it's about 330 images with a GoPro in a static position, uh, or I think it was from about eight o'clock at night. Well, in fact, it was half past seven looking at the time to whatever time it was the following day. I think it ended up at about six o'clock looking at that. Yeah, so 5.59 in the morning. So my range is going for over two days and that's important for the bit that I'm gonna cover in a bit. If you are um, taking images over multiple days, uh, then you will just make sure they need go in order when you add them to your timeline uh, in a bit later on. But at this stage, we just need to import these images. Mine are all in one area, so I'm going from 444 and luckily mine are numbered because again, they were taken on a GoPro. So I'm going 444 and I'm going right to the end to my 765 and I've got 322 images selected. I'm going to import selected. So that's going to import the images and it's going to put them into an existing event, which was 13 of the 721, as you can see on the screen there. Okay, so we've got all the images now imported into our library as it will be in this uh, dated event here. We now need to create a new project and I can do that by clicking on the new project button here or I can push Command and N on the keyboard and it brings up the box to create our project. So I'm going to give it a name. Time Lapse YouTube Tutorial uh, Final Cut Pro. So I've got my video format set on 1080p HD. That is a lower resolution than my static images. So that leaves me room to maneuver and zoom in and maybe create a Ken Burns effect a bit later on once we've got the final video created. It's going to go into that event 13 for the 7th. Click OK. So we've got the project named. Now we can start bringing our images into the timeline underneath here. So mine are, uh, like I said earlier, taken on a GoPro and it has numbered them quite conveniently for me. So I'm starting at 444. From your point of view, if you're taking images across multiple days, just make sure you get them in the right order or it's not going to look right. I have made that mistake before by just dragging them in and then they ended up mixed up. But in this case, I'm going to go from 444 all the way down to 584. So my next image and the following day is going to be 585. So once I've got them all selected, again, I just hit shift key to get them all selected. And I'm just going to hit E and that will drop them straight down into my timeline view here. And if I scroll to the end, you will see that my playhead should be around the last image, which it is. So it's still there. So my next image is going to be 585. So again, just go into my next date, which is the 8th of July in my case. And I want 585 down to the bottom hit the shift key, left click on the mouse, and then push E, and it drags 181 images of the 323 from the 8th of July. So that's all my images in, that's all 323 images that are now in my timeline on the bottom. So if you start playing around now and start having a look at these images, the only thing you need to make note of is that make sure that when we do the next bit that you select the timeline window. So you can do that by just clicking into the timeline window like so. 
or you can push command and two on the keyboard and that takes you to the timeline window. The next thing we need to do is select all the images. So to do that, it's a standard keystroke, which is command and A, and that selects all images in the timeline window. So before we go any further to the next part, I just want to explain the duration that what we're doing here. So you see I'm at the beginning of this clip number 698 here, and we're at 4220. And if I push play on the playhead now, you'll see it takes 10 seconds to go from the beginning of the clip to the end of the clip. And it doesn't create any motion, obviously, because it's then going to skip to the next image, which was taken two, three minutes later. So the top and bottom of it is there's a 10 second gap between the start and the finish of each individual clip. So we need to change the duration of the all the clips that we have selected. So to do that, we push Control and D. And you'll notice now that this goes blue, the duration goes blue, and that is now ready for us to input the duration for individual pictures. So I'm just going to push one on the keyboard, which means one second, push enter or return on the keyboard, and then it sets each picture to a one second time. And just so we can see things just a little bit bigger, I'm just going to push shift and Z on the keyboard, which will then bring the timeline window to full view. And then we can now even play this video and you'll notice that we've got black bars on the side of the uh, video at the moment. We can change that in a second once we've created our compound clip. So I'm going to push play on the play uh, head and then you can see each image is now playing. But what it's doing, it's not a compound clip as such yet. What it's doing is just going, jumping from one clip to the next. So it's creating that um, effect of motion. What we need to do is create a compound clip from the images that we have selected. So to do that, we need to, again, if you start playing around uh, at this point and you've not created your compound clip and you select off the timeline, so now I've only got this image selected, for example, and I try and create a compound clip at this point by pushing Option and G, it will then say, well, okay, we're gonna create one. I'm just gonna put uh, test at the end of that. I'm gonna click OK to create a compound clip and you'll see all it's done is for that single image it's selected, try to create a compound clip from that, which is not really anything. So I'm just going to undo that. Again, I'm going to select all the images by pushing Command and A. So the point being is you need to make sure you have all these images selected. Command and A selects that as long as you're in the timeline window, or you can drag a box all the way around them like so. There's lots of different ways of doing it. The easiest way for me is on the keyboard, which is Command and A, select all the images. At this point, we need to push Option and G. And it now says, okay, we're gonna create a compound clip from all the images you have selected, and what do you want to call it? I'm just gonna leave it set as time-lapse YouTube, time YouTube tutorial Final Cut Pro clip. So click OK, and it will then merge all these images together to create a compound clip. So there we go, we now have the video created from our set of still images. We've now got this compound clip or video created in Final Cut Pro. So this time lapse now, we can just tweak it a little bit because you'll notice we've got these black bars on either side and that's because of the, my ratio of my uh, still images is slightly different than the 1080p that I selected at the beginning. So what we need to do is just scale in a bit and in my, you might have to do this if your images are more suited, uh, but I like to tend to do this because what I can do is then create some sort of motion afterwards. So I'm just going to zoom in on the scale, making sure that I have my video selected when I'm doing this. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. If you all wanted to scale in, obviously make sure you've got the image selected. Then you can zoom in and out like so. I'm just going to put it at the beginning so I can see it a bit better. And then I might want to just tweak it a little bit more around here. So I might want to try and get rid of them houses on the right hand side. So all I'm doing is zooming a bit on the X. I'm just going to zoom it in just a little bit more. Like so. And I might just bring it uh, down a bit as well. Just so I can see a bit more of the sky. And there we go. So now we've got this effect across the field with a compound, uh, with this compound clip that we have created. And what you can also do, depending on how far you zoom is, uh, zoom in, is maybe give it a little bit more motion as well by creating a Ken Burn effect. So again, making sure you've got the video selected, click on the Crop tool, click on Ken Burns. And if you're used to Final, Pro or, uh, Final Cut Pro or iMovie in any way, you'll be used to this Ken Burns effect. It basically draws two boxes around your image and you tell it where you want to start and finish. So for example, the green box is the start point. So I might want the green one to start just a bit there, and I might want the red one 
to just finish where these central point there is so I'm going to click done there and then see what we've got see how that looks so let's do that push play and then you got this motion going across as well as the general motion from the actual video itself so there we go that's how to create a time lapse video from a bunch of static images using final cut Pro on your Mac. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, please do hit the thumbs up icon. Also, please do consider subscribing to my channel. I am always creating tutorials like this. And feel free to hit me with any comments below. They are always much appreciated. And thanks again for watching at the Computer Lab on YouTube.